Hi guys, Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, today's video is going to be called How Heaven and the Universal Laws Work. I heard firstly about the Universal Laws back in the early 1980s. Um, didn't really think too much of it because I thought, wow, how does this all work? And it was just in that too hard basket, so I didn't really do much investigating or research at that point because of all other distractions in my life. Then I went to America where I had the experience where I died. Wow, did it all make sense to me when I was in heaven. When I came home in 2001 back to Australia from the USA, because I died in the USA, I heard someone say to me, have you read the book the secret so I just put it in that basket in the back of my head because I didn't want to be in that stereotyped regime if you want to call it that of what other people have heard and what other people have written everything I do is in my own opinion and my own empirical evidence right so it was it wasn't until about five years ago that I actually read the book the Secret by Rhonda Byrne. I love her work. I am not saying anything bad about her book at all. However, what was made evidence through this um, teaching that she prophesies through her three rules is that she actually missed out on the doozy rule. And it is a doozy because the rule that she left out of that book, in my own personal opinion, was the rule that is so hard to do. So therefore, they leave it out and just say, what does she say? Trust, ask, receive. Now, I thoroughly believe in those three rules, okay? I'm not poo-pooing her at all. I'm just referencing her work to what I have learned through my own near-death experience. So... When I started writing my book, it was actually called Heal to Success. And it was about 200 pages long of how to do the missing rule from the book, The Secret. And the biggest confirmation that I give to people is how many people read that book? It sold over 100 million copies, correct? So why isn't there 100 million millionaires out there because the biggest question that people ask for when they when they're looking at the law of attraction the biggest question that most people ask is where's the money show me the money yes that's what we all ask for so we've got to put all this into perspective so what I did is I've gotten rid of a lot out of heel to success and I've now called it the teachings of heaven. So it's in my book, Five Years in Heaven, the teachings of heaven. It's the second part and it starts here. So the first part is all my near-death experience, where I went, what I saw, did my life review, learned about life contracts, life lessons, reincarnation and all the rest of what I saw up there, right? But in the back part is how to create the laws of attraction to really work for us. Okay. So in my table of contents, the universal laws are chapter two. So if you do want a copy of my book, it's in the description below. You can get it as a hard copy, what, what I'm holding now, or you can get it as the PDF version. It's a lot cheaper, right? So. I've actually got a chapter here all dedicated to the universal laws. Okay, so I'm going to do a little excerpt today. And what I'm going to do is go through all 12, because there's not just one law, which is the law of attraction. I'm going to go through all 12 and tell you how important it is to not just try one law. We have to incorporate all of them together. Okay, pardon me. So, little excerpts here from page 213 in my book about law of um, universal laws. 
our very thoughts can do manif- can and do manifest into our reality. I actually say what we think we create, okay? What we think about we create by creating that same vibration or energy to us. It's like a magnet. It's like an attraction. It comes to us when we're putting out that energy. It's like throwing out the seeds to birds and then miraculously the birds will come, okay? So we cannot simply use one law without the others. It will never work. So I'm adding the universal laws into this book so everyone can fathom the depths of using all these laws collectively and to manifest what it is that we want in this existence. Now, we've got to remember here the word existence. It is our one life that we have in this body. So I'm now presently inhabiting the Linda life in the Linda body. But I've had many other lives. I've had many other soul contracts, soul lessons that I've got to learn, correct? Okay, so universal law one. Now, Before I start, if you do want to write these down and research them a bit more, grab a pen and paper and write them down as I go through. So universal law one is the law of divine oneness. This helps us to understand that we live in a world where everything is connected to everything else. We are all one. Every single thing is connected. So in that same philosophy, we cannot use one law unless we're incorporating all 12, okay? It is. It virtually says everything is one. So 12 laws all meld together to create the oneness of what they all represent, okay? Which is what I learned in heaven. Everything up there is one, okay? Universal law is the law of vibration. Now, what I've said here is states that everything in the universe moves, vibrates and travels in particular patterns. Every single thing moves on its own vibrational level. Now, how does that work with stagnant energy? Stagnant energy does not stop being energy, okay? It just stops and it's stagnant. So that's why I say to people, when you want to create new energy in your house, clean out your house. Get rid of things that you don't want that's holding on to all that old energy. Bring in new things to create new energy and even just move things around in your house. Put a pot plant over in the other corner or change a book in its shelf so we're creating that energy to become more vibrant in itself through the protons, electrons and what's the third one? Who knows it? Protons, electrons and neurons. Okay, they make up an atom which is energy, okay? So universal law three is the law of action. Action must be applied in order for us to manifest things on earth. Energy is constantly moving. If no action is taken, then the energy becomes stagnant, okay? So we can sit here and we think, oh my gosh, I want a million dollars. Oh my gosh, I want a boyfriend, girlfriend or partner. Oh my gosh, I want a better job. I want a better car. I want this or that or that. But while we're just thinking it we're actually creating it in our mind to be in the future i want is virtually saying i don't have okay so when we say i want a better car what we're saying is i don't have a good car now so we're creating that energy that our car is not good. See how these all work together? Okay. Universal law four, the law of correspondence, states that the principles of laws of physics that explain the physical world, energy, light, vibration, and motion, all have their own corresponding principles. Okay. As above, as below. This is where we get the words yin, yang feminine, masculine. Okay. So what is on one side is generally mirrored onto the other. So this is where we go into the mirror effect, which is a totally separate chapter in my book. Okay. I talk about the mirror effect. Okay. Uh, Let me just find it in my book. The mirror effect is chapter seven in my book. Okay. 
So please, if you want to get my book, it's on Lulu and it's available on the link below. So what does this one mean? Everything is in motion. Everything has the yin and the yang. So in this case, if we want a better car, we will never get that new car while we're putting energy into the one we've presently got. Okay, it's that yin yang of the universe. Universal 5 is the law of cause and effect. States that nothing happens by chance. Every action has a reaction. There are no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. So this one dictates that when we're saying to ourselves, I want a better job, the universe is now going to create those synchronicities it could be a formal reprimand, it could be a compliment from your staff, it could be any sort of ripple effect through that mirroring or reflection where energy is created by our very thoughts, okay? So nothing happens for a reason, and without a reason, okay? Every action has a reaction, all right? I remember years ago, I worked at the lotto office, the casket here in Brisbane. I was only a teenager and I kept thinking to myself every day, man, I hate this job. I hate the people here. I want to get out. So what happened? The energy created this synchronicity where I got offered, one, I got a promotion, so I was out of those toxic people that I used to work with, but then as that ripple effect created again, I was only in that promotion for about two months and a job landed in my, virtually landed in my inbox and it was a better position where I went to, okay? So the law of cause and effect what we think about, we're still creating in our head, but we've got to remember everything happens for a reason. We've got to remember our life lessons in there. What is our life contract throughout our, our lives that we're supposed to be a part of on that path, okay? Universal Law 6 is the law of compensation. Blessings and abundance are provided to us, the visible effects of our deeds. Now, it's not always good. <laughs> let's go there. If you're a nasty person, let's just go there. I had a troll, right? Look what happened to my troll and I did nothing to cause this reaction that happened to him. Okay? He lost his YouTube channel. He lost his subscribers and now no one's watching his videos because it's like karma. Yes, this is where karma comes in compensation people who are doing the good by others get those brownie points in heaven okay we don't we don't run away from our life review we all must go through that life review where we must heal and forgive and judge our own reasons for doing things in this life it's inevitable no one escapes it, okay? So this is why I teach live to learn and how to be heaven on earth now. So when we're in our life review, it's awesome because every good deed that we do is tenfold. So if you smile at a stranger and he smiles back with a little bit of gratitude, when we're in heaven doing that scene in our life review, that emotion is tenfold. That gratitude is so deep and raw, okay? So this is what the compensation means, okay? When we do good to others, good things come back. When we're bad, nasty troll to others, that energy through all the laws come back, okay? This is the law of cause and effect. This is the law of correspondence. This is the law of action. This is the law of vibration. When we're nasty and we're putting out all those negative vibes dip, 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 into the universe, all those negative energies are going to come back to us and bite us. And then we get into this blame. We blame everybody else for everything happening to us. 
but we don't realise we're the ones who created it. So this is where all the laws work together. Okay? Law of compensation. If we do good to others, good things come back. If we're nasty, karma bites us on the butt. Okay? I'm just going to be honest with you. Universal Law 7. The Law of Attraction. How we create things, events and people that come into our lives. Our thoughts Feelings, words and actions create energy which in time, um, turn, creates and attracts similar energies. Okay? Now this is why the law of attraction fails so many people. Because we're saying, I want a million dollars. I'm broke. Now as soon as we say to the universe, I am broke. The universe picks that up on their radar and they say, you're broke, you're going to stay broke because that's what you're creating. So this is why one of the things I love about Rhonda Byrne in her book, The Secret, she actually said, if you want to be a millionaire, you must think you are a millionaire now. You don't say how broke you are. You say, I am rich i am giving i am happy i am a loving kind beautiful generous and gorgeous person okay and this is where our daily affirmations come in i am okay dolores cannon said it i am the more we say i am and fill in the blanks we're creating those through all the universal laws Okay, so law of attraction. Just remember, you can't use it unless you learn all of them. And we're only up to law eight. There's 12. Let's keep going. Law eight, the law of perpetual transmutation of energy. What the heck is this one? We all possess the ability to change the conditions of our lives. High, higher vibrations consume and transform lower ones which affect change think of a butterfly okay was it always a butterfly no it started out as a grub caterpillar whatever you want to call it it has to go into the cocoon and make that transmutation into the butterfly that is what it's talking about in this law okay so we all have that ability to change and the more we think about who we will be and we make it now in our presence. So we're saying, I am the butterfly, even though I'm still in this caterpillar appearance. That is how we make all these things work. Okay. Universal nine, the law of relativity. Wow. We're going into physics now. Tests of initiation. Ooh. We receive problems to strengthen our light within. This law teaches how to compare our problems to others' problems and put everything into perspective. Lady came to my house once and she said, Oh, you wouldn't believe it. I had an abusive husband. It was the worst, worst, worst say case scenario. And I just looked at her and I said, Did he kill you? She said, No, no, but he broke a bone. Oh, 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 he was a narcissist. He always abused me. And I looked at her and I said, well, did he kill you? Because that's the worst case scenario, right? She said, no, no, no. I said, well, guess what mine did to me? Never say how bad you've got it. Because there's always someone out there in the worst position. Or there's always someone out there in a better position. Yes? Okay. So we don't judge what other people have got. We don't go, we go into that perspective and we say, this is nature and natural. Okay? Don't compare, don't judge. We receive problems to see how we're going to deal with them. Do, when problems come into our lives, do we deal with them negatively? Or do we use it as an opportunity to grow as an individual? That's what this law is telling us. Okay? People say all the time, oh, I'll get a million dollars. 
oh, I'll get the new car, I'll get this, I'll get that, and a new house, and blah, blah, blah. But then they sit there and they think, oh, man, now I've got to pay insurance on that big car. Then I've got to do that. Then I've got to move. So we're creating all that perpetually negative stuff, which is what this law of relativity says, okay? Now we go into Universal Law 10. The law of polarity states that everything is a continuum and has an opposite. Here goes the yin and yang that I was talking about before in the law of um, correspondence. So above, so below, yin, yang, right? We can suppress and transform undesirable thoughts by concentrating on the upper pole, mental vibrations. The more we think negatively, the more we gossip, the more we're sarcastic, the more we ask, why did that guy do that? That shows expectations. That's showing control. That's a need within us, which is all negative. So if we allow others to do what they want and we say, I do not care what you do. How powerful is it when I say to people, I don't care what you do. It's extremely powerful words because it's not that I don't have a concern and I'm not worried. It's that I don't care what people do for it is their life. They have that acceptance from me to be anything they want and I will accept them unconditionally. When my friend Kim went to Cairns, 30 hour drive away, she came over and she said, why aren't you upset? I'm leaving. I'll probably never see you again. I said, Kim, I don't care. And she got all upset. She couldn't work it out. I said, darling, it's only geography. At the end of the day, I'm still going to ring you. We can do video calls. We're still connected as best friends. But it's only geography that keeps us apart. So our energy will always be in motion through the universal laws, correct? Okay, so everything is a continuum and has an opposite. So the more we think about what is good and right by the universe, the more we are creating that all over the shop. Now, isn't it funny how we need this right now? The whole world is going negative, hate, hurting, angry, abusing people. Every day we're seeing DV, murder, suicides on the TV. Everyone's getting lowered vibration. And all they have to do is start saying, I am better than this. I have a great life. All they have to say is, I am being a better person today than I was 10 years ago. And then the whole energetic field around them changes through these universal laws. That's how we get ourselves out of depression. And if you know my story, I had bad depression. I've been diagnosed with chronic post-traumatic stress in the past when I left the police as an administration officer. I had chronic PTSD. And how did I get through that? And how do I still struggle to get through it today? Is that I keep remembering my I am's. I keep thinking that that was just a one part of my life and I had to learn all those lessons through those opportunities for growth. Okay? So now, Universal Law 11, the law of rhythm. Everything vibrates and moves to certain rhythms. These rhythms establish season, cycle, stages and patterns. And why do you think history ever repeats? I tell myself before I go to sleep. Remember that song? I don't know if you know because it's an Australian song. Um, anyway, who sang it? Um, the Flynn brothers from New Zealand, they sang it. Okay, so what happens is with this one, law of rhythm. Everything is in cycles, Okay. Everything is in cycles. So as we go up with our vibration, then we have our moments where we go down with our vibration and you think, eh, I don't want to be stuck here in this yucky, yucky vibration again. So we lift ourselves up and then we go around again. But then the more we do something, this is the big one. Oh, itchy nose. The more we do these cycles where we identify the good times and we're identifying the bad times, guess what happens? You start doing this. So instead of being a big circle, you're coming around in here instead of down here. And then this goes up higher. <clears throat> so instead of being a circle here, the circle changes. 
and it changes and it changes and it keeps growing so your lows are not really lows they're where you used to be is your high okay <clears throat> universal law 12 the law of gender now how important is this right now with gender equality gender changes okay so let me go into this one okay everything has a yin which is masculine and a yet i'm sorry a yang which is masculine and a yin which is feminine okay once we comprehend that the law of attraction oh yeah so sorry i don't explain it so everything has its masculine and its um feminine energies okay identifying what is masculine you know if someone said to me what is a masculine entity i think of that as the old hunters and collectors okay the masculine if you look at the movie the croods the you know <laughs> dinosaur era cartoon show for kids the croods but the men go out all day and they're hunting they're the ones showing the strength they're the courageous ones that catch the dinosaur and kill the dinosaur and cut it up and bring it back as food so the the feminine energy creates the house they're the ones who keep order for the family unit they're the ones that deal with all the emotional support needed to keep the unit going and the men bring in the food to keep it going as well okay so this is where we identify all those energies through from the strength through to the nurturing supportive woman energies okay so we must use all these universal laws together to make what we want in our future to be present now in this time <clears throat> okay so <clears throat> how does this all go with heaven in heaven it's a transmutation of all 12 laws we think we create anything we want we've instantly got it okay there's no negative up there because we get through all that in our life review where we heal where we grow where we understand and comprehend our past so then we don't um, keep that negativity when we go into heaven because when we're in heaven it's that continuum love okay so how do we acquire all this ha that's where you've got to go and read the other half of my book okay so i hope that's helped us a little bit today giving us some insight into how to be better people in a world gone mad in a world where i've called it a spiritual war for the past three years the world wants us to be negative they want us to be hating separated isolated they want us to be judging and accusing everybody else and they've succeeded or have they because every day i use those 12 universal laws because i remember how important they are in heaven and the most biggest thing is is that they will never take away what i hold within because it's within us that's where we create it and that it spreads out of us like that pheromone that i keep talking about and it spreads to everybody else around us and that's where the magic starts so have a look at your 12 universal laws think about how you want to change your own world your own existence your own life and what do you want to be tomorrow because ultimately when you look at those laws how do we create it is to imagine it now for what we think we create Talk to you all soon, guys. Bye. To learn more about your Solistic Alignment, please press the like button and click subscribe. To purchase any of Dr. Linda Kramer's books or services, please visit www.lindaray.info.